name is Kathy, and today I wanted to discuss food production after a societal collapse. I will be doing a whole series of videos on this topic. This is the first in this series, and it is important because the most important element of food production is dealing with the soil. Okay. After the dust settles from a societal collapse situation, the issues of food production become serious. In this type of a scenario, it becomes absolutely critical that food crops survive and thrive consistently. In the modern world, agriculture is heavily dependent upon petroleum products to run the machines, as well as running the trucks that transport the harvests to grocery stores plus the heavy dependence upon chemical fertilizers and insecticides. In a societal collapse situation, all of this infrastructure will be non-existent. It will be up to the individual families and groups to grow enough food to feed the group without machinery, fertilizers and pesticides. Now, we're all interested in eating organic. So it might seem like a good thing that chemical fertilizers and pesticides will no longer be available, but it is not. The soils of the world, in particular the western countries, have been seriously depleted of essential nutrients through poor farming practices and other means. As an example of what I'm talking about here, when wood and coal were the major means of heating and producing electricity, large quantities of sulfur existed in the air from the burning of these fossil fuels. This sulfur would then rain down upon the land and enrich the soils with needed sulfur. This is not happening anymore and sulfur is not being deposited on the soil as a result. This has been causing a sulfur deficiency in soils. Sulfur is the main mineral that gives vegetables their great taste if you've been eating store-bought vegetables, you know that they do not have the flavor that they should. This is one of the reasons. Now understand that I'm not saying that wooden coal should be used again to the extent that it was in the past, because air quality is important and smog from burning these fossil fuels caused many deaths. It was right for the practice to have ended. I was just using this as an example of the principle I'm talking about. This soil depletion is happening all over and with multiple elements of good soil nutrition. As a result of this depletion of the natural soil chemical, chemical fertilizers were used. This allowed crops to grow normally because their basic nutritional needs were being met. This is one of the problems with organic vegetables. It is good that organic vegetables have removed the chemical poisons from our diets. This is wonderful and a tremendous step forward. But all organic means is that the produce does not have these chemicals in it. It does not mean that the vegetables have all the nutrients that they should. Organic is still the best way to go here, but this soil deficiency issue is a big one. So, here you are in a societal collapse situation and you absolutely need to produce viable crops. There is a way to do this and I will go through the basic process here. First, you need to choose the location of your food production. The land should be relatively level and have good drainage and have plenty of sunshine and have a water source nearby and you need to be able to protect it from other humans that may try to steal your extremely hard-won food product production. So it will, it will need to be close to your dwelling. If you have access to an already existing garden patch, you're doing great. If not, you will have to create a growing spot without the help of machinery. Now, this may seem like a daunting task, but it is doable. Let's start with preparing your soil for planting in this societal collapse situation. The first step is to establish the shape and size of the spot you are considering. Next you remove the top sod layer. This is done with a shovel. You shovel off clumps of sod and then you shake all the dirt 
out of this root system and then throw the sod out of your chosen garden spot. If this was the creation of a normal garden spot, you would simply lay down black plastic or several tarps in the early spring and let the, the, light, the lack of light and heat of the sun kill every living thing under the black plastic tarp. But in a societal collapse situation, you don't have the luxury of time to do this. So you have to do the more labor-intensive digging of sod and shaking the dirt out. Now, the easiest way to perform this task is to just shovel the sod into one to two foot square chunks, just roughly. And don't shake them out immediately. Just shovel up a row or two of sods and then sit down on the ground and get comfortable and shake the sods out and throw them out of your garden spot from the seated position. You will be amazed at how long you can work and how much you can accomplish using this method. It works even faster if one person shovels the sod and another person does the shaking. At the age of 60, I desodded a garden patch that was 40 foot square in a day all by myself. And I wasn't aching and, and it's sore or aching afterwards. So this isn't as awful of a job as it might seem to be. Once you have desodded your garden patch, then you need to use a hard tined potato digging fork to loosen the soil through the entire area. Now do not turn the soil over. All you're doing is just a, a si simple step on the potato fork and lever the soil up so that it's, it's aerated a bit. Don't lift the soil off, off of the ground, just loosen it. And when you're doing the desodding, the shaking of the dirt out, any insect larva that you happen to come across in your garden patch, remove it, throw it off onto the side, let the birds eat it. You don't want that in your garden patch because they'll eat your vegetables. Okay, now from this point, you need to enrich the soil. Organic material is first on the list to, of things to apply to your garden spot. Dead leaves, straw, hay, seaweed, Anything that you can find, ideally a two to three inch layer of organic material spread over the entire garden area would be good. Do not use things like pine needles though because they're highly acidic and very few garden vegetables can tolerate that much acid. Under normal circumstances you would get your soil tested and then apply what is needed for the health of your soil. But in a societal collapse scenario, you do not have this luxury. So a generic enriching of the soil is your best choice. First up is lime. You need to find some lime source. This can be eggshells, crushed, crushed oyster shells, dolomite lime, or anything you can find that will serve this function. You will need anywhere from 3 to 6 pounds per 100 square feet. Now how you do this is to measure out three to six pounds of the lime product you have located, then break that up into four equal parts. Measure your garden out into 25 foot sections and hand sprinkle the lime evenly over those areas. Don't try to, to sprinkle a hundred square foot chunk because you'll have more in one area and less in another. It doesn't work very well. Now, next up is nitrogen and phosphorus. Your best bet here is animal manure, animal manure or fresh uh, fish meals. Not only will they supply you with nitrogen but also more organic material. Your best bet here is to use the manure only in the spots that you will be planting in. As an example, if you are planting a row of corn then you would create your row with a hoe and then sprinkle about one inch of manure in the row, then put the seed down, and then cover the seed with about one to two inches of manure and a little bit of soil mixed into it. Do not spread manure all over the garden. Oh, and when I speak of manure, I'm speaking of old manure, not fresh stuff, oil old. You will not have enough, so use it where you actually are growing something. Now, wood ash 
is the best way to get potassium into your soil in a societal collapse situation. Use the same method of spreading the wood ash as with the lime product, 2-3 to three pounds per 100 square feet in this case. Adding sulfur to your soil is necessary. Sulfur can be naturally found in areas around hot springs and in volcanic regions. It is also widely found in nature as iron pyrite, fool's gold. Gypsum. The plasterboard walls of houses are made of gypsum. Epsom salts are also sulfur. Just sprinkle sulfur around your plants. Don't spread it over the entire garden area. Only use it where you need it. Sprinkle about the equivalent of a teaspoon per tomato plant, just to give you a rough idea of how much to use. This is just a rough reference. Uh, sprinkle, it, sprinkle it a little heavier than you would salt on your food. Apply the basic soil amendments first and lightly work them in with a garden rake into the soil. Then put the organic material down on top. That's your hay, straw, that kind of stuff. Do this work as early in the spring as you possibly can. But don't work the soil if it's wet. If you've got wet soil, you have to let it sit. If you work wet soil, you'll do far more harm to your soil than anything else. Wait until the soil is dry enough before working. Once all of this preparation work is done, let the land sit for about a month before planting. So that gives you a rough idea of how early in the spring you need to do this. You will get the hang of this and the feel of what your land needs. This is a good start though. Remember that you cannot simply throw some seeds on, on the ground and expect to harvest food. You have to prepare the soil. Everything starts with the condition of the soil. Also, Remember that insect pests will only attack vegetables that are nutrient deficient. Healthy, well-balanced soil is your best defense against insects' pests. There's a lot of other things that, that can be done as well, and I'll discuss this in, in future videos. Now, I've seen this. Um, I lived on an organic farm uh, for a while, and uh, we used very good soil um, uh, enrichment. It, it was really a healthy place, well-balanced, healthy soil. And you could see, um, you know, certain cabbages in certain areas, absolutely untouched, perfect, and the one right next to it was being eaten alive by insects. There was something about that particular plant, that particular chunk of soil, that wasn't up to snuff as far as that plant was concerned. And the insects ate it to pieces, left the, the cabbage right next door to it, untouched. It's just absolutely amazing how that works. So if you get the soil right, the insects will leave it alone for the most part. Not, not completely. Now, you may be able to obtain the things I have suggested for your food production lot. Just do the best you can. Everything you do will increase your chances of achieving successful harvests and start to think creatively about where you might be able to locate the out items outlined above for your soil. You may surprise yourself in what you can come up with. Well, that's it for today. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.